Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm recording this video to show you how you can calculate uh, dependency ratios for your town, the town in which you live in the United States. It's not hard. Uh, it's actually fairly simple. Uh, to get started, let's head to your favorite search engine, whatever that may be, and let's type in the words American Fact Finder. Either fact finder is two words or one word, it doesn't matter which. And you'll be taken to results, and the first should be a website called factfinder.census.gov. Click on that. And then you'll be taken to a web page that shows a happy family or smiling people of some sort, and uh, a link that's called Community Facts. It says, find popular facts, population income, etc., and frequently requested data about your community. This is super. This is a, a website set up free and open access uh, by the United States Census Bureau. How helpful. Well, take your town. And if you live outside the United States and you want to learn about the United States, just pick the town you're interested in. Um, I'm going to pick the town for this example of Menominee in Wisconsin. Uh, why? Because I just love to say the name Menominee. Uh, it's so much fun. But it, uh, it could be for any other reason. And then click Go, and you'll be taken to a Community Facts page. And it's going to have a lot of links in it. But um, if you're interested in dependency ratios, which I'll explain in just a moment, you'll want to head down to something called the American Community Survey. Uh, in the example I'm shooting for this video, the most recent uh, American Community Survey was for 2014. Uh, that's because 2015 uh, has ended too recently to collect all the data about it yet. So let's uh, look below 2014 Community Survey and see that there's one link. Demographic and housing estimates, age, sex, race, households, and housing. We'll click it. Now we're going to be taken to a table that's going to contain a whole lot of information. And it's going to tell us right up at the top that it's describing this for the town of Menominee in Wisconsin. This is important because we want to check our work. Now, the next thing we need to do, <laughs> simple, right, is uh, we need to calculate some dependency ratios. But what are dependency ratios and why would we want to calculate them? Well, uh, to think about what dependency ratios are, we really just need to uh, think of a few uh, uh, equations. There's a youth dependency ratio, there's an old age dependency ratio, and a total dependency ratio. And all of these dependency ratios are trying to establish one thing, and that is how many people who, according to demographers, are likely to be dependent uh, on others are there for every person who is of working age. That is, who, at least if we think about what working ages are, could be in the set of those who are working. Okay, So who are the two sets in terms of age of individuals who, who might be thought of as dependent? Well, the first is youth. And when do kids usually start to head out for their first job? Around age 15, 16, 17, 18. Sometime in those years, people begin to work jobs and start to uh, carry the load in terms of uh, having a job, economically speaking. There, of course, are other ways to carry the load. But that means that folks who are 0 to 14 years old are typically not thought of as part of the available workforce. Similarly, uh, there are uh, uh, there's a retirement age in the United States, age 65. So for those age 65 and older, they are also uh, likely to be dependent on others to generate um, uh, income. Uh, now, some 65-year-olds uh, are going to continue to work, 66-year-olds, 67-year-olds, and there are some uh, children who have trust funds, or maybe they're child actors, and they may be engaged in work. But the idea of the youth dependency ratio, which is those aged 0 to 14, divided by those aged 15 to 64, and the idea of the old age dependency ratio, which is 
uh, those aged 65 plus uh, divided by those aged uh, 15 to 64 is that it creates a fraction. And in the fraction, it'll tell you how many uh, of these particular kinds of generally dependent people, even if there's one or two or three or four or a handful of exceptions, how many of these retirees there are for every person who is working, or how many young people there are for every person who is working. And you take that fraction and then you, you, you uh, do a division and you'll come out with a, a decimal figure between um, zero and who knows how many. And that will tell you, uh, the answer will be in that decimal figure, how many of those dependent people there are for uh, those who are in the age range to be working. Uh, why does that matter? Uh, it matters if you are interested in the large population structure of a country and you want to figure out, as time passes, are there more workers to um, create uh, uh, value through their work uh, relative to those who are not available to work? Or are there more dependent people compared to non-dependent people? And remember, in sociology uh, in general, and in demography in particular, this is not a blame game. We're not trying to say who are, who's good, who's evil. We're not trying to say a two-year-old should be out working in the mines. And similarly, we're, we're not trying to say that retirees uh, are a, a moral drain on the nation. However, those who are retirees, those who are aged two years old, are, are not liable to be in the workforce. So knowing the relative numbers means that not on an individual moral level, but on a structural level, looking at the entirety of a town or the entirety of a state or the entirety of a nation, how many people are there who are liable to be working compared to those who aren't? That tells you a number of things about the kind of stresses and strains, or if there are a lot of people of working age compared to non-working age, the amount of surplus that you're uh, liable to create. And then if you can track that across time, you can see what trends are coming and you can begin to plan for the future. That's how this kind of social structure, the dependency ratio, matters. Now, let's take a look now at our uh, uh, example of the town of Menominee. I just love to say that. Menominee, Menominee, Menominee. I love it. Let's uh, think about how we would create a youth dependency ratio, which is the set of people who are age 0 to 14, how many there of those there are, and then how many folks there are who are 15 to 64, and that's going to be on the bottom of our fraction. Well, if we look here, we see... Uh, that there's a set of listings of years. And then there's a column that is estimates. So for those under five years of age, 204 of them. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see these numbers. We can see that for those age five through nine, there are 206. 10 to 14, 314. Oh, how handy! It ends right at 14. So what do we do to get the total number of those who are aged 0 to 14? Well, we add these three numbers up. Uh, I'm going to do that using my computer's calculator function. You may want to use a handheld calculator, and that's fine. You may want to use pencil and paper if you can add by hand. That's great. Any way you choose, that's fine. But what I'm going to want you to do first is to write down 204 if you're studying Menominee, plus 206 plus 314, and we'll come up with the number 724. So there are 724 individuals aged 0 to 14 in Menominee in the year 2014, according to the American Community Survey. Yeah, excellent. Now, what do we need to find? We're going to divide that by those who are in the working age range, 15 to 64. Okay, so we've got 15 to 19, 20 to 24, and on and on, going on down, all the way to 60 to 64 years. Super! Um, that ends right where we want it to. There's a reason for that. That's because the folks in uh, the U.S. Census Bureau are sensitive to the needs of demographers. Great. 
So I'm going to clear my calculator and I'm going to start here with those 15 to 19 years of age, which they're 325, 20 to 24 years of age, 99, uh, 25 to 34, 283, and so on, 428 plus 608, up to 54 years of age, plus 247, 55 to 59, plus 200. And we'll find out that there are 2,190 individuals aged 15 to 64 by adding up all the individuals in the relevant age range. Let me write that down. 2,190 people uh, in Menominee uh, uh, of that working age range. So now we can calculate the youth dependency ratio, which is simply going to be 724 divided by 2,190. What could be simpler? Now that is going to give us a number, and that is 0 0.330594, if I round up. What does that tell us? Uh, okay, it tells us that there's a third of a person, almost exactly, in Menominee for every uh, who is, is, is uh, a youth for every one person who is of working age. So we, you could flip that around in your mind, right? And you could, you know, if you do a little math, uh, you could say, oh, so there are three people working uh, just about for every youth. Uh, that's good to know. That's a meaningful description of what's going on in the town, right? How many babies there are to feed or, or young children versus how many people there are to do the work to feed them. Okay. Well, now we could ask the same question about the old age dependency ratio. Uh, and we could do that by <clears throat> looking at those who are aged 65 and older. Uh, that's the number in the numerator above the line in our division. So that's those who are 65 to 74, 75 to 84, and 85 years and older. That's 284 plus 146 plus 35. What could be simpler? Not much. That's pretty simple. We know that there are 465 people in the town of Menominee, Wisconsin, uh, who are of retirement age. Uh, and, and then we have to divide that by the number of people who are aged uh, 15 to 64. Oh, we already know that. That's great. We already know it. It's 2,190 people, so we're going to divide that by 2,190. Super. Okay. And that means our old age dependency ratio is 0.21233, rounding it a little bit. What does that mean? Uh, it means that just about, okay, I'm, I'm fudging the math a little bit here. Um, it means that there, for every uh, old person, right, that there are about five, uh, me, old meaning of retirement age, okay, uh, there are about five people of working age, because uh, 0.2 times 5 is uh, 1, okay? So that's the meaning of the old age dependency ratio. Um, we also can notice that there are fewer retirees in the town than there are youth. Uh, that's interesting, right? So most of the dependency that's happening in the town Although not a huge majority, a majority is happening because of youth that are there. There are some towns where there are very few youth and there are a whole lot of retirees. So, hmm, what can we do now overall? We can say, let's not care uh, about youth versus old age. Let's just talk about people who are likely to be working and people who are not likely to be working. And that is the total dependency ratio. And what you do there is you take the, on the top, you take the number of people who are uh, 0 to 14 plus the number of people who are 65 plus, add those two together, and then divide by the number of people who are aged 15 to 64. Well, we already have all of those numbers. We know that for uh, those 0 to 14 in Menominee, we have 724. We know that for those who are uh, of retirement age, 65 plus, we have 465. So now I have 1,189 of those people of non-working age. Um, and I can divide that by those aged 15 to 64. Excuse me, I seem to have made a mistake, so I'm going to do that again. 724 plus 465. Okay, and now I'm going to divide by 2,190. 
There we go. That makes sense. I must have made an arithmetic error because I got uh, a number that was really big. Uh, my number here, the total dependency ratio is 0 0.5. Four, two, nine. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means that, well, for every one person who is of a non-working age, there are almost two people, because uh, it's a little over 0.5, almost two people who uh, are uh, 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 of working age. Okay, almost two. So almost two people supporting every one person who's dependent. That's good to know. Now, oh, is that 0.5429 figure high? Is it low? Uh, to get that kind of uh, context right, you would really need to look at other populations, not just Menominee. As fun as it is to say Menominee, 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 all over and over and over and over, not everyone in the United States lives in Menominee. Uh, some people live in Chillicothe. Some people live in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Some people live in Horseheads, New York, another great name for a town. Um, still, we could compare the total dependency ratio of Horseheads, New York, uh, or of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, or of Chillicothe, Ohio, to Menominee, Wisconsin. And we could say, where, uh, in which of these towns are uh, the, the people of working age uh, having more people of retirement and, 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 and youth age to take care of? And where, in what communities, are there uh, fewer workers uh, uh, available to take care of uh, folks of working or retirement age? Uh, in those different towns, you're likely to have different kinds of economic experiences, different kinds of tax bases, different kinds of needs for services, social services that are provided through schools, through hospitals um, that serve folks who are young and folks who are very old, retirement centers, um, and the like. Uh, how easy is it going to be for those towns to do that? How easy is it going to be for workers to bring home a paycheck uh, and find that they have extra spending money or no extra spending money because they have more or few, fewer people to take care of? That's the kind of information that a dependency ratio can start to get at. And it is, it is a, an absolutely a rough uh, back-of-the-envelope estimate because there are people of working age who do not work and there are people of non-working age that do work. But overall, it's a fairly good indicator, a fairly quick indicator, as you can see in the timing of this video, not too long at all, um, that can tell you a whole lot about how things change.